You're listening to the Sports Circus, and I'm Mike Golick. Welcome to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio, AAMP.TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all-natural, dry-aged, USDA prime Wagyu steaks and chops. What do you try their best-in-class New York steaks, the filet mignon, of course, the king of all, those cowboy cut and tomahawk cut ribeyes, best I've ever had, probably be the best you ever had as well. What do you check them out at UppercutChops.com? That's UppercutChops.com. Or give them a call. Find out what's for dinner at 702-799-9935. 702-799-9935. That's 702-799-9935 for UppercutChops.com. Yes! And welcome in to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and independents, all 215 of you, and all of our Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, and WOW Cable television viewers, as well as everybody else on Hotel TV in over a half a million rooms from coast to coast. Lots to talk about here today. We have a lot of Super Bowl content because this is Super Bowl week. But first, we want to run through the NCAA and get through the rankings and where we stand right now in college basketball because, yes, we are right in the middle of what? College basketball season. And going right to the rankings. We're going to talk about these games very, very quickly, try to knock these out in the first segment, starting with number one ranked UConn with their last win coming 77-64 over St. John's. And... They've got a game coming up against Butler at home, which should keep them ranked just ahead of Purdue for the number one spot. Speaking of Purdue, what a very nice game on Sunday against Wisconsin at Wisconsin, a very tough game. I watched that one, and at one time it looked like Wisconsin was going to come back when the game was around 51, 50, maybe 55, 51. Then it was a uh, I think it got to be about a two-point game, but somehow Purdue just pulled away, and they are clearly the class of college basketball this year. What a resume they've beaten. All the big teams from the Kentuckys, the Marquettes, the Kansases, the Tennessees, et cetera, et cetera. Gonzaga, they've blown teams out. Arizona, they crushed Arizona when they were ranked number one. And on and on we go. They are just a quality, quality club. And Purdue with a... Zach Eady, seven foot four senior, who is a he, th- this guy is doing the unthinkable. He's actually going four years of college. He's going to graduate because that's actually what Purdue University produces. Yes. Nice to see college graduates that are actually playing sports. That's really good stuff. Purdue, their next game. Well, hell, they've got themselves about a week off, and they don't play until. They host Indiana, hated rivals, the Indiana Hoosiers, and that's going to be next Saturday, the 10th. North Carolina with a very nice win for them. And, of course, that is always proceeded by a chorus of boos. Carolina with a very good win. We'll just say that. We'll give them a little credit. At Cameron Indoor Stadium on Saturday, 93-84. Their next up is Tuesday. Clemson, they're hosting Clemson, should be another easy victory for Carolina. So, Houston, ranked number four, loses by 13 to Kansas. And Kansas is ranked number eighth, and of course, they're going to jump. And Houston's next game, they're hosting Oak State on Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time or 6 p.m. Central. Tennessee, with a real nice win against Kentucky, That was on the road, 103-92. Ranked number five, likely they're going to stay ranked. Well, no, they're going to probably jump up to number four because of Houston's lost. 
but they've got LSU next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central. Wisconsin, who I just mentioned, had a real tough loss to Purdue at home. They're going to drop from number six, likely drop down to about number eight, maybe eh, maybe eight, because Duke lost to his number seven. We're going to get to it in a second. Wisconsin played a very good game. They're they're at Michigan. They're going to Ann Arbor over to Chrysler on Wednesday, the 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Duke, with their loss, will go from seven down to at least eight or nine, possibly 10. I'm going to say probably nine because number 10, Kentucky lost. And so Duke, next up for them is Notre Dame. They're hosting them on Wednesday the 7th at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Kansas, of course, with their win at Houston, nice road win, they're likely going to jump up to the number six slot in the next polls out. They next are at Manhattan, Kansas. They go to Kansas State, and that's going to be today, February 5. Marquette, number nine, with a nice win against Georgetown. They completely dismantled Georgetown, 91-57. Next up, St. John's, Marquette will likely jump up to number six in the rankings from number nine. The hell, they just last week they jumped up five slots. Marquette's jumping the leagues. And Kentucky, of course, with their loss at Tennessee over at Rocky Top, they got themselves a very tough Vanderbilt matchup over in Nashville on Tuesday the 6th at 8.30 Eastern time. Arizona Idol, they had themselves a... Well, a pretty bad showing, and who knows what's going to happen there. I'm not going to spoil it for everybody here. Arizona and Stanford, I think they're going to find a way to beat Stanford. They should anyway, but they're playing at Stanford. Iowa State with a two-point loss at Baylor. They are ranked number 12, and they had just jumped 11 slots. Likely they're going to plummet in those rankings because of that loss. And, well, let's put it this way. Iowa State... You're going to get well because you're playing at Austin at UTA on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Creighton, the Blue Jays, with themselves a one-point loss at Butler. They had just jumped up four slots to number 13. Likely they're going to jump down or fall down to maybe 14 or 15 with that loss. And they're at Providence on Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Illinois, with a nice win at Nebraska, number 14, Illinois. Next up is Michigan State on the road, and that's next Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So Illinois likely will jump a slot or two as well. Texas Tech with a terrible loss at Cincinnati, 75-72. They're ranked number 15. They just jumped up five. They're going to probably drop down about five. They are next up with Baylor on Tuesday. And Auburn. Dropped eight slots, eight slots last week. Now, they got themselves a nice win, 91-77 in Oxford Miss. You know what was interesting? One of the players on Auburn did not recognize Morgan Freeman, and he thought Morgan Freeman was an old Miss fan, so he got into a shouting match apparently with Morgan Freeman, only to apologize later to him, not realizing who he was shouting at. Next up for Auburn and War Eagle, They're at Tuscaloosa, and that's going to be Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time. Go Auburn. Utah State, number 17, jumps up one last week at 19-3 overall, but they turn right around and lose to San Diego State, and they're going to probably drop all the way down to number 20. Next up is Nevada, and that's going to be on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Baylor with that two-point win over Iowa State, likely will jump up at least one. Next up is Texas Tech. That should be a very interesting game because two teams ranked right about where they're at. 18 and 15 will probably flip-flop in their rankings. Florida Atlantic, a very, very good squad. Those guys, better yet, those Owls, 18 and 4, had a real nice win, 102-70. And I believe they draw the University of Alabama-Birmingham on Thursday, their next game at 8 p.m. Central Time. So that number 20 rank is going to probably turn into about a number 17 rank. The Dayton Flyers at number 21 got themselves an easy win at St. Bonnie's. Next up is St. Joe's on Tuesday. They're 21. They'll likely go to 20. Brigham Young with a nice win at West Virginia. 
Number 22, Brigham Young. They dropped down one last week. This week, they're going to probably jump up at least one or two. Next up for BYU is Oklahoma on Tuesday. Oklahoma, of course, we just mentioned, they are number 23, and they got themselves, well, their hats handed to them in the last week. They lost 12 slots, and they just lost to Central Florida by 11. Next up, of course, BYU. So these guys are really, really, they're probably going to drop out of the top 25. Alabama, who we had mentioned before, they had a real big win over at Starkville. They won by 32, 99-67. Next up, of course, Auburn. War Eagle, let's go. Roll Tigers, go Tigers. Not Roll Tide, but go Tigers. And TCU rounding out the top 25 at 16-6. and six, They lost at Texas, 77-66. Next up is Iowa State. A week, well, it's about a week down the road here. And they're going to play Iowa State at oh, 1 p.m., central time and that's going to do it for your college basketball report we're coming up next is going to be a lot of super bowl dialogue going to talk about what's hot what's not where to watch it where to go and how much those tickets are in just a few minutes here on the sports circus lots more to come folks don't go anywhere I'm your ringmaster, Sal, of the Sports Circus. Join me and Hall of Fame world champion and all-star celebrity guest for chaos and controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms. Also, thesportscircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus, and we prove it every day. Attention business owners. You and your customers are listening to this right now. Face it, every business needs customers, even yours. The Sports Circus is a primetime, nationally syndicated program that's carried on ABC, NBC, CNBC, and Westwood One News affiliates, plus CBS, Fox, and NBC sports affiliates across North America with coverage from Hawaii to New York. Also, the Sports Circus is available to the 180 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, and the Sports Circus gets about 4 million website visitors per month, which could click through your website and bring sales. The Sports Circus provides great content featuring celebrity guests from sports and entertainment to our audience every weekday, which your company could greatly benefit from by increasing your visibility, foot traffic, eyeballs to your website, and calls from potential customers. Call us right now at 702-799-9935. Again, 702-799-9935. Or email us at info at thesportscircus.com. That's info at thesportscircus.com. Drive your sales today by advertising with the Sports Circus. Could you use a little extra money right now? If you'd like to borrow up to $100,000 and get pre-approved in minutes, call the number we'll give you at the end of this commercial. Our lending partners have already loaned millions of dollars to individuals just like you, and we're ready to lend you up to $100,000 if you qualify. Even if your credit is not perfect, you could use the money to pay off high-interest credit cards for home renovations or consolidate existing debt. You can get flexible, easy-to-pay terms. The consultation to find out if you qualify is free. To find out if you qualify for our special financing program, call Call this toll-free number 24 hours a day. 800-335-1376. 800-335-1376. 800-335-1376. That's 800-335-1376. Important terms and conditions apply. Not all applicants will qualify. Loan amount, annual percentage rate, and term will vary depending on credit worthiness. Applying does not guarantee approval. Account approval is subject to verification and confirmation of your credit history and acceptance by a lender. If you choose to apply for a loan through us, a consumer report will be obtained to evaluate your credit worthiness in connection with your application for credit. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Agus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Agus steaks and chops directly to your door. 
store without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 That's 702-799-9935 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Louis Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal. Thank you, Roy, and welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV, right here in Las Vegas. Folks, this segment is brought to you by... The Sports Circus. Make sure you check out thesportscircus.com for our upcoming guests, our prior guests, our recorded shows, which are our podcast, and they can be viewed and listened to in their entirety at Pick Your Favorite Podcast Platform. So make sure you go to thesportscircus.com also to check out our existing partners. Lots of great partners been with us for quite some time. And one of those is the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Check out csncoyotes.com for upcoming games and events. That's csncoyotes.com for the College of Southern Nevada Athletics. Yes! Yes! That's my patented yes! So don't try to duplicate it. If you do, make sure that you don't edit the credit and give me full credit for it. All right, welcome back to everybody on TV and radio. Everybody listening in all the way over in Honolulu. Thanks for joining us on C- what is it? CBS Sports 1500 KHKA, folks. It's been a long day. KHKA, and that's some of the New York Yankees and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Welcome in, everybody, in Southern California that may be listening with our friends over with NBC News and CNBC Financial right here in Las Vegas, as well as all of our friends in Chicagoland, San Francisco, Seattle, Miami, Denver, New York, even our friends down in Atlanta. Thanks for joining us on 99.1 FM WDJY. Auburn, Alabama. I can't forget our friends over there. Oh, War Eagle. And that is 1230 AM WAUD, home of the Atlanta Braves. And a big hello to our friends down in Miami and the greater Fort Lauderdale markets and Orlando and every other place around this, these United States of America that picks up the sports circus. All right. Now that I got all that out of the way, we're going to turn our attention right back to Las Vegas and... This is Super Bowl week. Right now, people nowadays have birthday weeks. Hell, they have birthday months. Well, today's your birthday. Well, no, it's my birthday week. Okay, great. Maybe it's your birthday weekend. Well, this is the Super Bowl week. So all the festivities, all the mayhem that happens here in Vegas, well, it is Vegas. So it's all going to be supersized. And it's going to be hyper media covered as well. Of course, we are going to be working with our friends over in Los Angeles at CBS with some boots on the ground right here in Las Vegas. Nice round of applause for us helping out our friends over there as well. All right, so before we get to what's happening here in town, there are always distractions, right? Always distractions, somehow, somewhere, somehow, some way. Well, here you've got the two teams that essentially are supposed to be there, and that's sort of what the money wanted, in my opinion. We'll get back to that. Well. It turns out that there are always distractions. And this time, it's not Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. No, I mean, that seems to be the ultimate distraction. Just when you think things could get a little hairier, how about this? How about a police report? Oh, yeah. How about Patrick Mahomes? Senior, the dad arrested on a DWI charge just days before the Super Bowl. Unbelievable. This is down in Tyler, Texas. So Pat Mahomes was arrested by police in Tyler on a charge of driving while intoxicated. Perfect. And the jail records, yes, you heard that right, the jail records show that Pat Mahomes Sr. was charged, then released on $10,000 bond, the arrest was designated as, quote, driving while intoxicated, third 
or more, close quote. What the hell is third or more? Could that be third offense? Ding, ding. What do we have for him, Johnny? Jail records show two previous DWI charges, one from 2012 and another from 2018. Now, the details from his arrest were not immediately clear per court records cited by the Kansas City Star. Mahomes Sr. pleaded guilty to his 2018 DWA charge and served 40 days in jail. He served the sentence on weekends over a span from 2019 to 2020. And the arrest is just days before his son, Patrick, is scheduled to lead the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl against the 49ers. And of course, Patrick Jr., that is, is seeking his third Super Bowl ring and third Super Bowl MVP trophy, but now has this ridiculous distraction to deal with, just like that, of course, of Kelsey and Swift. Now, Mahomes Sr., in case you don't know, is a retired professional athlete who played 11 seasons of Major League Baseball. He was an average pitcher, pitched for the Twinkies, the Red Sox, the Mets, the Rangers, the Cubs, and the Buccos or the Pittsburgh Pirates. But, you know, we think about these distractions. And now the bigger question is, is Pat Jr. going to be distracted by Pat Sr.? Apparently he's seen this movie. But one thing I want to know before I even get into that is, what is the deal with serving sentences on the weekend over a span from 2019 to 2020? That sounds like preferential treatment to me, folks. Well, it's kind of like taking a weekend class. Well, let's take a weekend sentence or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> it's ridiculous to imagine that somebody could actually have that kind of latitude. So can you say privilege? Hmm, I don't know. My opinion is privilege. And that's my opinion, and I'm entitled to it. You can have your own opinion. You could think that I'm a knucklehead. So be it. I don't care. But these distractions are uncalled for, unnecessary, unprofessional, and ridiculous. So we think of all of these things that are going on around the Super Bowl. And these sorts of distractions, they remind me of other distractions that happen. We see this in politics all the time. You'll see this, for example, a super storm heading to California, battering the California coast. Oh, it's hurricane force winds and all this other crap. And of course, to me, in my opinion, I believe it's weather manipulation, all that kind of ridiculous stuff. Only to do what? To distract people from what's really going on. And my question is, what's really happening? So watch the media over the next day or two for stories that have been buried, political things that have been buried that they don't want you to pay attention to, but they can't hide it technically. They have to report on it, but it'll be way down the trough. So just like all of these former players that played, you know, they didn't make a lot of money before 1993, the pre-collective bargaining era guys in the National Football League. And so, you know, a lot of these guys, they had, well, they had to have a second job. Sometimes they didn't make too much money, so they had to have a second job, maybe even a third job. And sometimes I would argue that they probably gambled a little bit, so maybe a little bit of gambling. So here's an interesting site called Gridiron Heroics. I don't know these guys. I don't know anything about them. But I read their story, and the story was kind of interesting. They talked about not athletes, not the boys or the mob, they had something out there called, wait for it, mob leets. <laughs> of course, that's where mafia, according to Gridiron Heroics, mafia meets football is a unique take on historical relationship between the Cosa Nostra and football. Wait, does that relationship really exist? Now, according to, of course, Gridiron Heroics, they say when the mafia is referred to, it is not referencing the Bills Mafia of the NFL. They're exploring the actual organized crime group. Now, the Mafia and, debatedly, the NFL thrive on secrecy. Mind you, this is all according to Gridiron Heroics. If you want my take on this, we'll talk about it offline. And, anyway, they say they thrive on secrecy. So it's different to confirm anything with absolute certainty, according to 
gridiron heroics. Now, they say, Michael Francesi, Mafia meets football take. It's hard to trust a silver fox that looks this good when he's in his 70s, but anyone who follows former Mafia members know that Michael Francesi is a credible guy except for when he says he didn't kill anyone when he became a made man. It's okay, Michael. We know, according to Gridiron Heroics. Now, Michael tells his story best, but a few key takeaways on how Mafia meets football are, according to Gridiron Heroics. They say, point one, the intense look in Francesi's eyes and stronger New York accent is a little bone chilling if you follow his YouTube channel, where he mostly discusses Jesus and Andrew Tate. Michael was a boss and about his business. In the 1970s and 80s, professional football players didn't make much cash, as we stated. To make good on their gambling debts, they had to fix the games with certain plays, of course, so bookies got their coin back. And Gridiron Heroics also says point shaving happened in multiple sports and sports teams all across the country. They also say game fixing still occurs. Keep an eye out for the refs. Players make too much money nowadays to worry about gambling debts. Now, I would I would absolutely agree with the fact that it's not necessarily the players, and I believe it is the referees. All right. Actually, when we come back from break, we're going to carry on with this gridiron heroics content here. This is actually pretty interesting because I have a lot of input on it. But, you know, we think about the players. Yes, the players make a lot of money. Then who are the cheapest people on the field? If you're going to try to pay somebody off, it would only stand a reason. It would be the cheapest person on the field or the referees. Now, that makes the most sense. And we've seen scores and scores of suspicious plays in the NFL. And, of course, in Major League Baseball with pitchers being squeezed, bad calls, the NBA, notoriously, we've we've got that one. We had, in fact, their guy on the air. And lots more to come on this. Anyway, folks, back here on the Sports Circus in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. You'll like this one. I'm your ringmaster cell of the Sports Circus, a primetime nationally syndicated television, radio, sports, and entertainment show. The Sports Circus covers topics others are too scared to talk about. There's no other primetime show like it on here that'll punch you in the face and you'll beg for more. Join me, Hall of Famers, World Champions, and All-Star Celebrity Guests for Chaos and Controversy here on Lipson and all podcast platforms, plus the SportsCircus.com. Remember, folks, it's a circus and we prove it every day. If you are trying to quit drinking or doing too many drugs, listen to me. You don't know me and we'll never meet. I had a problem like you once. I drank and used to party a little too much till it got out of control and almost ruined my life. I realized I needed help to fix my problem before it totally destroyed me. If you've tried to fix your drinking and drug problem and you know you can't do it alone, you need to call the National Treatment Advisors. They'll immerse you into a 30-day program to replace your old habits with new habits and totally change your life. And if you have PPO, private health insurance, the entire program may be covered. Fix your problem right now before it gets any worse. Get clean. Call now and learn more. 800-957-6209. 800-957-6209. 800-957-6209. That's 800-957-6209. The old way of living with diabetes is a pain. You've got to remember to do your testing and always need to stick your fingers to test your blood sugar. The new way to live your life with diabetes is with a continuous glucose monitor. Apply a discrete sensor on your body and it continuously monitors your glucose levels, helping you spend more time in range and freeing you from painful finger sticks. If you are living with type 1 or type 2 diabetes and you use insulin or have had hypoglycemic events, you might be eligible for a CGM through your insurance benefits. U.S. Med partners with over 500 private insurance companies and Medicare. We offer free shipping, 90-day supplies, and we bill your insurance. Call us today for a free benefits check. 800-659-7805. 800-659-7805. 800 659 7805. That's 800 659 7805.
That's ridiculous. <laughs> Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Hey, everyone. Dave Jackson here, ESPN rules analyst on ESPN Hockey, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Cell, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AMP.TV. Folks, make sure you check out the SportsCircus.com, of course, for our partners, as I mentioned in the previous, but we have some new ones coming up. We have new correspondents. Of course, we want to make sure that we mention our good friend, Al Bubba Baker, the quarterback breaker and the rib maker, as one of our new football analysts for the Sports Circus. Al's one of those guys, folks, you, you're going to want to listen to this guy. Boy, he's got so much great information. He's in the 100-sack club, actually with 131 sacks in the National Football League. For some reason, not in the Hall of Fame just yet, but certainly will be there at some point. But lots of great content with Al. Also, we have another one coming up that we can't tell you about. We're adding somebody in the entertainment business. And, of course, once that announcement comes out, it'll be after the Super Bowl, then a press release will come out just like the last one. It went out to all the televisions and radio stations out there and the publications. And I think the Associated Press picked it up. And so did a whole bunch of affiliates from ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, uh, you name it. They all picked them up. A bunch of independents as well. TV stations all over from the CWs to whatever. Anyway, so lots of great things coming up here on the circus. Great entertainment, of course. The great Wayne Newton, Mr. Las Vegas, is going to be coming to the sports circus. And we're going to set a date for that within the next couple of weeks. And, boy, that's going to be a big treat. Now, folks, if you don't know anything about this guy, boy, he is a very, very interesting guy. And, honestly, I never knew anything about him. All I had was this, this um, well, let's put it this way. I just had a, I had a very, very wrong view of this guy. And, ultimately, Wayne Newton is one of the good guys out there. And on top of it, he even plays 13 instruments. I didn't even know this. It was unbelievable. What a gracious guy. Gracious guy. So Wayne will be coming out of the show. Nick Bakai, the voice of Salem the Talking Cat from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Also, he is the, I guess he is the writer and producer, the creator of a show called Bookie, a new series out. I think it's on Cinemax, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, so Nick Bakai is going to come with us. He's also, I think he was the an assistant producer or one of the producers for Two and a Half Men, also for the show Mom. I mean, huge, huge hits. So Nick's been on here before. He's actually from Buffalo, so we'll be able to talk Buffalo sports. And that's always a good show whenever Nick's around. So lots of great things coming up here on the Sports Circus. We're going to get back to this gridiron heroics thing. So they were saying, well, they had a... Um, they had this uh, article that came out, and it was about mobletes. Not athletes, not mobsters, but a, com a combination of mobsters and athletes, so they call it mobletes. So I left off by saying in the 1970s and 80s, about from what they had said in their article, professional football players didn't make much money to make good on their gambling debts. They had to fix the game with certain players, right? And so the bookies got their money back. And, of course, that always goes back to the, who is the most expensive player on the field or better yet who's the most expensive bodies on the field and who's the cheapest well the referees are the cheapest so it's probably easier to convince them that they want to make some more money now they also say at gridiron heroics point shaving happens in multiple sports in sports teams all across the country and they also say game fixing still occurs keep an eye out for the refs if players make too much money these days so of course the referees seem to be easier so the best known alleged mob leads, according to Great Iron Heroics. First one 
is Paul Horning. Ah, yeah. <laughs> this guy. So Paul, the Green Bay Packers in the 1950s and 60s, was well known for his particular talent for playing multiple positions on the field, his reputation as the league's bad boy, and being a mob lead. Now, rumor has it that Horning's alleged mob ties won him the Heisman Trophy in 1956, his poor stats and playing for a bad team while doing that. How does that happen? Who knows? But a leaked document allegedly showed the director of the FBI permitting an FBI regional office to interview Paul Horning and Vince Lombardi, his head coach, in 1963 about Paul's alleged gambling indiscretions. Again, this is all according to Gridiron Heroics. Now, Paul was suspended indefinitely, a sentence commuted to a year in 1963 due to gambling and socializing with known undesirable individuals, a.k.a. the mob. And Horning was well known for his gambling many nights away with mobsters right here in fabulous Las Vegas and was affiliated with the boys in Chicago. And those would be, it's funny because in this article they say the Chicago Mafia members. Now, folks, you got it wrong over at Great Iron Heroics. The boys in Chicago were known as the outfit, in case you're keeping score. Of course, one of Horning's most notable naughty organized crime friends was Jimmy Hoffa, the future alleged mob victim. After his suspension, the NFL looked the other way when he was seen out with his best buddies, an illegal bookie, but was banned from the Kentucky Derby as long as he played in the National Football League. And you know, folks, going back to that mafia thing, whatever, whatever, listen, if they refer to the boys in Chicago, they are referred to as the outfit. The boys over in New York and other cities, whatever, they have been tagged with that moniker of mafia. And of course, over in Italy, of course, in Sicily, they would be known as La Cosa Nostra, Right. So what do I know? My name is Salvatore. I don't know nothing. And guess what? I didn't see nothing either, if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right. Another athlete that was one of those mob leads, according to Gridiron Heroics, was Alex Karras. Now, Alex was a unique character of the Detroit Lions who got in a bit of a trouble spot. He did. And Alex's biggest insult was calling someone a milk drinker. And he responded to unappreciated authority with a tossed shoe, most notably a college coach. Yeah, he also threw the occasional helmet at the teammate. Yeah, threw it right at the heads in the locker room as well. So Karras, here we go, bad in 1963 again. We just saw that from Paul Horning. Karras was also banned in 63 for blatant gambling by the NFL Commissioner Roselle, who referred to as buzzard. And there's less information about Karras's mob ties, according to Gridiron Heroics, but he is allegedly an example of when the mafia beats football. Now, Mike Florio, Mike Florio's deep dive into when the mafia beats football continues on. Now, Florio was the well-respected sports writer, went in on the NFL and detailed when mafia meets football repeatedly in the article that we're referring to. And of course, he had more tea than Boston Harbor, but we'll focus on some of his more scolding takes. So those included Jessica Savage, NBC journalist who died suspiciously at the age of 36, interviewed John Piazza, an organized crime associate who claimed that he fixed four games in the NFL in the 1960s and 1970. Piazza claimed that he worked with quarterbacks and their head coaches, so everyone was on the same page when the quarterback started bombing. And John seemed shady, but he did pass a lie detector test, something that mattered in the 1970s and 80s. The NFL allegedly acknowledged the attempted fixing of one game. Gamblers tried to bribe two New York football Giants players in 1946. Los Angeles mob boss Jimmy the Weasel Fratiano explained that referees could be swayed easily, especially when TV replays didn't exist. In 1970, four quarterbacks, including Broadway Joe Willie Namath, allegedly that is, and two coaches were evaluated by the Detroit Grand Jury. 
and their connection with Bookie Dice Dawson. Following the quarterback Bookie theme, Ken Stabler allegedly kept company with Nick Dutich, the infamous Bookie. In 1978, two NFL players were found when Bookie Bertie Fuke was home, was raided. Roselle downplayed it, saying the players were on the last leg of their careers. And of course, a handful of former teams, NFL teams, and the team owners were messy with mobsters, allegedly, according to Gridiron Heroics. Edward DeBartolo Sr. was rejected by the Major League Baseball affiliate or Association. Actually, it was just Major League Baseball, to be clear. By, to buy the team due to his gambling, the 49ers had no such reservations. Al Davis was paid a finder's fee, or better yet, a founder's fee, after the sale. Clint Murchison, former Cowboys owner, had alleged ties to the underworld, most notably the boss of New York or New Orleans crime family. Former Chargers owner Eugene Klein owner owned a hotel where Meyer Lansky allegedly held crime conferences. How interesting is that? And of course, the aforementioned Al Davis was business besties with Alan Glick, a casino owner who somehow didn't know the mob was doing business for years in his casino. And Glick might have had collabs with other team owners as well. And of course, most messily was the case of Mr. Rosenblum, former Colts and Rams owner, and Carol Rosenblum allegedly invested in casinos, loved gambling, and fixed games against his own team. His unique method was to just leave key players at home, allegedly. And Rosenblum suddenly died while swimming, despite being an avid swimmer, an alleged mob hit. A witness claimed they saw Carol calling for help, was momentarily distracted by a black object in the waves, and then while attempting to reach Rosenblum, he saw two men retrieve the body, place him on the beach, and then leave. Hmm. Back here in a few minutes on the circus. Going to continue with this in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere. Last more to come. Ah, Tim beats Point of Deal ballpark, friends. High pop fly. That one be a home run in a phone booth. I don't know what the big deal about Cracker Jack is. Did you ever go buy a pack of Cracker Jack thinking you'd get a prize and find no prize <laughs> in the box? Here's the pitch. That might not sound important to some people, but when, you, when you're a little kid, especially from a humble origin, and they cheat you out of a prize, there's a bouncing ball. Second baseman has a Barbary over the first. It's hard to think in laudatory terms of the product. <laughs> I Too think much. if there was an occasional box of Cracker Jacks that found no prizes for uh, the, the, the for the little Harry Carey many years ago. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> that boy went a box of Cracker Jack to me meant a lot of money. Here's a pitch bounce foul. That's the most asinine marketing I've ever heard of. One ball, one strike. These guys say, well, you, you sing about Cracker Jack. I said, did I only sing it because it's in the song. Here's a pitch foul back. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised, even to this day, some youngsters who buy a box of Cracker Jack don't find a prize in the box. One ball, two strikes, two out. Well, if you're going to talk about our congressman being crooked, here's a pitch foul out of play. Why not talk about commercial products that don't do what they represent to do? There's a smash to Squires. He's got it. One, two, three. Nothing to front. We're going to the bottom of the seven now. The score. All tied up. Milwaukee four. The White Sox four. Hey! Everybody! All right, Nancy. Let me hear you.
This crowd is wild. Welcome back to the sports circuit. I'm Al Bubba Baker, quarterback breaker and the rib maker. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the AMP TV studio, AAMP.TV. Folks, this segment is brought to you by, I'm going to say it again, and I'm not going to say it that time. How about this one? How about Donnie Most? How about Donnie Most? Remember what Melf, let me see if I can say that again. Remember Ralph Melf from Happy Days. Now, folks, I've got right here in my hand, I actually have Donnie Most, Mostly Swinging. This is a CD. And this is some really incredible music that you've heard samples of right here on the Sports Circus from Donnie Most. As a matter of fact, folks, I've got the CD right in hand. There's nine tracks, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 tracks on Mostly Swinging by Donnie Most. Really good stuff. You could pick up your personalized CD from Donnie. And in fact, you can find them at The Real. Donnie Most, realdonniemost.com. Find him also on Facebook, Donnie Most. And by the way, welcome into everybody on Facebook, Instagram, and you name it. So Donnie Most, check him out. In fact, you could just Google him and find him everywhere. And this guy can sing. He is an incredible entertainer. You wouldn't even realize how good this guy is. You know, we think back to happy, happy days and we thought of, oh shoot, we thought of uh, Potsy or Anson Williams who was singing. Well, really, he was a pretty good singer. But Donnie is an incredible singer. In fact, he had a song that came out recently called New York High. And we showcased it on this show for quite some time. In fact, we're going to keep doing that just because we can. But New York High was climbing the charts. And this was a, it's a fantastic hit, folks. So that New York High, along with the CD with 13 tracks from Donnie Most. Additionally, check them out at The Real realdonniemost.com realdonniemost.com just how it sounds and folks we don't get anything for saying this we're just trying to help a friend and donnie's a great guy a nice round of applause for donnie most yes all right welcome back to everybody you know who you are tv radio mars rover <laughs> everybody else all right Everybody also on uh, social media. Again, make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. And that's TSC Show. That's TSC Show on Instagram. On Facebook, we are Sports Circus. You can also find us on X or Twitter at The Sports Circus. And also, you can find us on YouTube as well. All right. Back to the discussion from... Gridiron Heroics are talking about athletes, mobsters, something called moblets. We're talking about owners in the last segment, NFL owners. We talked about Carol Rosenblum's body being found apparently on a beach after, well, some people apparently rescued him and placed him on the sand. Not really sure about that, but this is about what they say mafia meets sports. And now we're talking about other sports. And of course, there's rumors dating all the way back to the 1920s that various sports games have been fixed. Michael Francesi confirmed that Tim Donaghy was involved with guys, well, with mob ties. Now, we've had Tim on the show. We talked to Tim about everything that had gone on. And of course, this organization, Gridiron Heroic, says Tim alleges that the NBA instructed referees to fix games despite who it was for, Donaghy had to fix the games to resolve the gambling debts. So Tim said he went to prison, I believe, for 13 months. He said he got into fights all the time, got beat up all the time. He came out, he actually put a film together. But, you know, they say here on this website, they say Donaghy went to prison for wire fraud and transmitting betting information in 2007. No one suggested that the mafia was involved in his offenses, not even the FBI. Allegedly, 
Donaghy didn't even really know to what extent he was. How do you like that? Suspicions arose when Tim was reportedly beaten so badly in prison by a convict with mob ties that he had to have surgery. And Michael confirmed this relationship, Michael Francesi. Now, so if it happened in one sport, it's not a far shot to believe it could happen in another. And of course, the suggestion will not be made in this particular discussion, but hmm, it sure seems to stand to reason that it can be. Now, additional resources when Mafia meets football from this Gridiron Heroics website. I'm just giving them all kinds of plugs here just because I found it to be a pretty cool article. And they say a resource for additional information would be Dan Moldea's book, Interference, How Organized Crime Influences Professional Football, written in 1989. And the book alleges that over 26 past and present NFL team owners have had mob ties. Over 70 games have been fixed and many law enforcement investigations of corruption within the NFL. So <clears throat> they say over 70 games. Yeah, I would agree over 70 games, but I would agree well over 70 games per season. Because at some point, we've all seen this. We're watching these football games. We say, well, hey, how did the ref miss that call? Or, or why did he call that? And we saw that from the instructor, or better yet, the broadcasters on the games. We heard it from the broadcasters saying, well, hey, wait a minute. That wasn't intentional grounding and all this other crap. We see this seemingly every week. Now, that it seems to me that they're cheating in plain sight. Now that the big casinos are involved in gambling, it's ridiculous, folks. And these games, I tell you, everybody is seeing it. It's kind of like the whole UFO thing. Everybody's seeing it. So you can't really deny it anymore. So now the government's not even denying it anymore. So there's a lot to be discussed when it comes to game fixing and all this other fun stuff, things that I saw back in Chicago when I was a kid. And it just gets bigger and crazier. So believe me, folks, this is nothing new. Nothing new whatsoever. All we have to wonder about is how often it happens, why it happens, to whom it happens with, and who are the winners and who are the losers? I think really that's what this is all about because there's always a winner and there's always a loser in all of these games and all these gambling ventures because at some point, what are they about? They're always about the most important thing. Show me the money! That's right. Okay, so now that we've got all that out of the way, Let's talk a little bit about the Super Bowl because this is Super Bowl week and I started out talking about that. So I'm going to finish talking about that. And so, of course, pick your favorite organization, article, whatever, whatever, whatever. There is the history of Super Bowl betting from William Perry all the way to Joe Namath guarantees. And of course, this is on Yahoo. And the Super Bowl has had a huge audience and fans tune in for different reasons. They have time shows, commercials, camaraderie at parties, da, 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 da. And for many... It means betting on the big game. And in fact, there have been 57 Super Bowls and plenty of betting stories to come from them in honor of Super Bowl 58 between the Chiefs and the 49ers. Here's a history of some of the Super Bowl betting. Of course, they say all of it, but it's not. Super Bowl three can be argued that the first big moment in sports betting history, other than controversies with the 1919 Black Sox or other college basketball point shaving scandals, including City College in New York in the 1950s, was... The New York Jets win in Super Bowl III. It was clearly the first big moment for Super Bowl betting, which has become the biggest day on the sports betting calendar. And of course, Jimmy the Greek, not a big fan, Jimmy the Greek proclaimed that the Baltimore Colts were 17-point favorites for the game, according to, well, somebody's biography of Joe Willie. Namath knew the spread and told at least one friend he didn't need the points but to take the money line at 7-1 to one because the Jets would win straight up. Bet it, Namath said, according to a book that was written. Bet the ranch, he says. Namath eventually issued his famous guarantee. The Jets won 16-7, to seven, and the massive spread, which reached 18 and higher in some places, became part of the game's lore. Super Bowl VIII, real quick. Ask an old school odds maker and they remembered the Pittsburgh Steelers win over the Cowboys as Black Sunday. And the game ended up being a debacle for sports books. Not only that, they felt sorry for them, but the Steelers opened up at two and a half and the bet was up to five. That led betters taking the dog, the Cowboys, and the line came back to settle at three and a half. 
And of course, there were a lot of Steeler fans at two and a half tickets and Cowboy fans at five. So that magic number, that was the scary number, was four. The game ended up being 35-31 with a Steelers win. Meanwhile, all of those bets won. So Vegas kind of took a bath on that one. Even Lefty Rosenthal, of course, the inspiration for the uh, De Niro's role in Casino, posted a promotion allowing bettors to take the Cowboys plus four and a half of the Steelers minus three and a half. According to Las Vegas Review Journal, that was a big loser for the Stardust, which is Chicago's hotel, one of them anyway. And as the legend goes, Casino's lost more than a million bucks on that Super Bowl. That was a rare loss for Vegas. And of course, Super Bowl twenty with the Chicago Bears and the Patriots came and gone. And that didn't have a lot of intrigue, of course, because the line was 10, but the Bears were expected to win big anyway. So sportsbook manager at Caesars Palace right here in Las Vegas had an idea. He came up with the prop bet of a defensive tackle, William Perry, the refrigerator, scoring a touchdown. And it was, of course, at the game time, one of those real long shot ideas. And they put that one out there at 20 to 1. Yes, 20 to 1. Well, guess what? Just so happens that the fridge scored a touchdown. <laughs> and there was a lot of money out there. $100,000 went right down the toilet when he scored that touchdown. Other ones in Super Bowl 29, we talked about is the 49ers favored by 18 and a half. One better made $2.4 million on a bet for the 49ers to win. And they won big. They won 49-26. So end of day, there's been a lot of this betting stuff going on. And believe me, folks, it's no, let's put it this way. There's no mystery to some of this stuff. And we have to mention this one. This was Super Bowl 51 with the Falcons. They were running away. They were up 28-3 to over Tom Brady and somehow found themselves on the losing end 34-28. They didn't show up in the second half, kind of like what we saw with the Detroit Lions and the San Francisco 49ers just a week ago. And so this is much the same argument. And so the betters really didn't even know how they lost. It was such a ridiculous game, and the casinos cleaned up on that one. But listen, there are a lot of bets that are going to take place in this one. We're not even going to have time for the festivities. We'll do that stuff tomorrow. But there are a lot of bets that can't be made with all the prop bets. You wouldn't believe some of these prop bets. I mean, seriously. There's big money line bets. You could bet on this quarterback, that one, how many fumbles, the coin flip even. There's, I don't know, 50-odd bets. I've, somebody told me once there was 50 different proposition bets that can be made. How many yards? This one's going to have this quarterback more than this quarterback this many interceptions, the over and under on the points, which is standard quarter-by-quarter quarter betting. Who's going to score the first touchdown? Is it going to be a wide receiver, a particular player? Is it going to be a defensive score? Will there be a safety in the game? How many field goals will there be? And on and on and on we go. Remember, sports betting is a way of life in today's game. And what has always been poo-pooed is now being embraced by the National Football League because Vegas is in on it. And that's going to do it for today's show. I'm your remaster, Sal, and we'll catch up with you in about 23 hours right here on your favorite station. Until then, keep your money in your pocket and spend it wisely. If you served in the Marine Corps, by now you know about the contaminated water problem at Camp Lejeune. If you were stationed or worked at Camp Lejeune from 1953 to 1987, you probably have a lot of questions. We have some answers. You could be entitled to compensation. Billions of dollars are being allocated to pay for damages to anyone stationed at Camp Lejeune during that time. Unfortunately, it appears that officials may have known the contaminated water problem existed and did little to protect their men. The Semper Fi Code was not honored. If you or someone in your family has developed a serious illness, including various forms of cancer, call this Camp Lejeune legal support line right now. You can't turn back the clock and change what happened, but you can certainly call right now and learn your rights as a Marine. Here's the number. Call 800-335-7196. 800-335-7196. That's 800-335-7196.